Hey everyone, this is Open Dragon Mouth number 17. Alright, um, already into the new year and yeah, it's been a bad start for me. Um, I've already told you before that my apartment was broken into and I have my PlayStation, I have my laptop stolen. So I am using a, a spare laptop in the meantime. Um, I've tried doing my show last week, and unfortunately, this computer is crap. Um, the, uh, the processor is just too slow. I've had both Second Life and Virtual DJ on, unfortunately. Um, if I have both of them on at the same time with this laptop, um, the music stutters, and sometimes it just goes into this, um, da -da 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 -da. So, um... So yeah, like I said, um, my show is going to be on a short hiatus until I get um, either that laptop back or um, I get a, a new one, which it shouldn't uh, take that long. It should be like a couple weeks. But, um, but yeah, um, my case is still under investigation. It's been a week uh, since then, uh, but I do hope... Um, and it will get resolved very soon, but that's all I'm going to say about that. I won't go into further detail, but um, hopefully I get that um, over with soon. All right, so um, let's get to our first news of the uh, new year. First of all, uh, I found this on a Facebook post, is that over in Japan, there's going to be um, this Pokemon-themed cafe, and um, I believe they call this on um, the... Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Cafe. And I've looked at um, the pictures of this one. They have like um, everything's Pokemon themed. You got, um, got all, all these Pokemon, uh, um, all these dolls, uh, they're on the wallpaper. There's, there's some that have um, uh, Pokemon sitting around a, a table all dressed up. And uh, even some of their um, food items, um, it, it's all Pokemon themed, obviously. It, yeah, uh, I don't know uh, what some of the names of them, um, of them are, but there's a lot of Pikachu stuff, there's Pokeballs. Um, yeah, do check them out. They, they look absolutely amazing. So, yeah, yeah do check that out. It's called the... Um, the Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Cafe, and right now it is only in Tokyo, but I do hope they spread that out. I would love to check that out. Um, however, I do want to point out that it's going to be open only for a limited time. It's slated to end its run in February, so if you're going to be in Tokyo, please check that out. In and I would expect that it would be crowded, because uh, there, because everyone knows Pokemon comes from Japan, and there are a lot of Pokemon fans over there. And uh, I'm, they even have um, shops called Pokemon Centers. Um, I just wish it was a bit more bigger over here. Um, I, I was into Pokemon when it first came out, and right around uh, Gold and Silver. I kind of started drifting away from it because it kind of got repetitive for me, but it's it's still big here in America, so. Um, still into the gaming topic, it's already been confirmed that there will be a third Five Nights at Freddy's, and I've taken a look at a preview picture of this one, and it goes with, this, with the phrase, I am still here, and an image of, um, I think this may be the scariest of uh, Freddy yet. And he looks a little bit more not into the semi-cartoonish look. Um, it looks like his skin is a bit more rotted down and even more fierce eyes. It doesn't look as creepy friendly as it was um, in the previous two games. Um, but that's all I know about this. All I know is that it's in the works. There's um, a little preview title screen uh, for you guys to, to look at. But that's all that they've given us at this time. I don't even know when it's going to come out. But um, three games in half a year, that's pretty quick. 
and even the second Five Nights at Freddy's, it was scheduled to uh, come out in early uh, December, but it got ended up uh, getting released early. So, um, what else we got? Um, Sofa Wolf um, got a, a bit of mentioning in Publishers Weekly. Uh, they ran a spotlight on um, author M. C. A. Hogarth. Uh, or Hogarth, however you say it. Um, and it mentions the novel uh, Flight of the Godkin Griffin. And um, this is uh, coming uh, from the article. In 2004, uh, she offered Flight of the Godkin Griffin, a sword and sorcery uh, fantasy diary directed to her audience via live journal, then a popular social blogging platform. Um, Hogarth uh, still actively connects with fans there. Um, each entry ended with a question about a minor thing that would happen next, and readers would donate on, uh, who donated could vote and have an effect on the upcoming scenes. So, um, it's kind of like uh, one of these, um, uh, novelty things uh, from, um, from, uh, cinemas, if you, um, lived back then where you would decide uh, how the story would progress. Yeah, I don't even know if that uh, if those still exist in movie theaters because I definitely have not seen it. Um, I mean, it it's still around, but uh, not as often as you would think. Um, Hogarth uh, sold this piece to um, the small press uh, Sofa Wolf as a two-volume novel, although Hogarth may have chosen to blaze the self-publishing path as a response to a traditional publishing industry that did not want her on her terms. She well suited to a flexible entrepreneurial approach to authorship, um, combining perfectionism with drive and marketing and management skills honed in the corporate world. Um, so that's quite something for a um, Publishers Weekly uh, to uh, give you a mention of your work. So. Um, yeah, that's quite a mention. And, um, yeah, a couple days ago, um, I had thought, uh, uh yeah, I qu quite uh, frequently forget the dates of fur cons, but, um, yeah, I thought further confusion was last week. I was like, oh crap, I forgot to do a, um, a con info a segment. Uh, because I was mostly in a panic about uh, what happened to me last week, so um, but um, I'm kind of relieved now. Um, further confusion is not till tomorrow, so um, somehow I can uh, go ahead and do that to you. And and oh, by the way, you probably figured it out. Um, I'm not um, doing the video from the uh, webcam on my uh, laptop, laptop uh, as I usually do in my videos. And instead, I'm using my high definition camera. Um, mainly because I had noticed when I did my previous video, the audio went in and out, so I switched it over to this, and, uh, hope... Ooh, ooh, excuse me, um... So hopefully, um, this will be a better quality video. It should be. I have it in high definition. Um, okay, you should be able to see the, um, the uh, wrinkle marks on uh, my forehead when I raise my eyes. <laughs> okay, anyway, um... This year's theme is uh, London Fog, a Victorian murder mystery. So, um, and by the way, this is going to be its uh, 15th uh, running uh, from what I read. In All right, uh, for the um, uh, for the schedule, and it's not the first time we did a murder uh, mystery theme. Uh, I remember when we did um, Mephit Furmead, I think it was in 2009, I think it was. Yeah, yeah they gave us a complete with a uh, notepad and a pencil. Okay. And they're kind of giving me the pocket uh, uh, version. So I'm gonna have to skip through all of the. All right, there we go. All right, starting on 
Thursday. On the, um, let's see. Yeah, this is getting kind of hard to read here. Oh, I just I just realized it was, it was listing the rooms and, and not the actual events. Uh, stupid dragon. All right, um, they're doing the masquerade uh, signups uh, quite early this time. Uh, it'll start at 9 p.m. in Blossom Hill, number one. It'll go from 9 p.m. to 10.30, so if you want to do the masquerade, you got an early opportunity. And of course, it'll do the dance from 10.30 to 2.30 a.m. in the uh, in the main uh, ballroom, uh, which will be in room 210. And, um, I had just uh, noticed, um, um, they do this with Anthrocon, but this will be in two separate segments. They have one for the uh, Convention Center and one for the Marriott. So be sure to um, uh, know the difference uh, um, which one it will be if you're going to uh, one of the panels. So be, be sure to do that. If, you, if you've been to Anthrocon, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, for Friday, uh, we have um, Masquerade signups again from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. in Blossom Hill 1. Uh, let's see, we're, of course, we, uh, what would it be without a um, MLP uh, panel, uh, the Evolution of MLP at 11 a.m. in Willow Glens 1 and 2. Uh, let's see. Opening ceremonies, um, yeah, yeah, they have it at 11.30. I thought it was going to be 11, because they usually do it on the top of the hour. Uh, masquerade rehearsal at uh, 12.30 p.m. at the uh, main stage at 2.10. If you want to meet the guests of honor, they will be at 2.11, the second stage, at uh, 12.30. Uh, let's see, we also have... Um, What's this? Paper Tigers. That's at Santa Clara. I don't know what this one is, but... Yeah, it kind of makes me think of uh, origami. Uh, you know, um, uh, the folding paper. It, 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 that, that's the first thing in case my mind... You know, I, mean, I mean, imagine trying to make tigers uh, with origami. Um, this is a weird one. Frankensuiter. At 2:30 p.m. at uh, 2:11, that is a <laughs> that sounds scary. Um, let's see, first suit dancing. Uh, there will be a panel on that at 3 p.m. at 1:11 in the convention center. Uh, there's going to be a furry writers guild meet and greet at 3 p.m. over at Blossom Hill One at the Marriott. Uh, there's a panel called Cat Got Your Tongue, uh, Public Speaking on the Fly. That will be at Blossom Hills 2 and 3 at 3 p.m. For, for you gamers, there will be a Super Smash Brothers tournament at Santa Clara. And uh, they have that uh, listed somewhere else. It has an um, sideways H on it. I don't know where that is. but uh, Let's see. There's going to be a photo uh, shoot, and uh, I don't know where it is. Oh, it's going to be at 2 p.m. at the atrium. I didn't even see that one. I thought it was just a separate uh, If you're going to be in the dance competition, there's an audition at 4.30 over at Willow Glens 1 and 2, and it'll be going to 6.30 p.m. Okay, there, there, there was a, uh, a name for a panel there that just made me laugh, but I'm not going to say it on here, but it's weird. Uh, there's going to be another uh, Masquerade rehearsal at 6.30 p.m. over at 2.10. Now I see why they did it early, because the Masquerade is going to be on Friday, um, which is very unusual. Uh, it's, the Masquerade is going to start at 7.30, because we usually have the Masquerade on either... Saturday or Sunday, but I guess uh, for the confusion, decided to do it on a on a Friday and get it out of the way early. Uh, let's see. The dance will be starting at ten thirty at um, room two ten. 
you were right, for Saturday, there will be another dance competition audition at Willow Glens 1 and 2 at the Marriott. Um, so that will be at 10 a.m. We also have uh, the fursuit parade, of course. Uh, the staging, uh, if you're going to be fursuiting, will be at 11.30 at uh, room 210, which is the main stage. And the fursuit parade will be at 12.30, of course, all around the hotel. Uh, if you're going, you uh, will be getting a, an idea of where the route is. I, they usually give you a sheet of where the route's going to be. So, uh, Let's see, what else we got? Uh, if you're going to be doing uh, photo shoots, uh, they'll be doing at 2 p.m. at the atrium after the parade. Now, going into the theme of this con, uh, we have something called um, FC Murder. That's at 4.30 at room 111. Uh, let's see, and then at 7.30, we're going to be having the dance competition at um, room 210. Uh, what else do we got? Oh, um, something I like doing, karaoke. Uh, that will be at 9.30 over at um, all three Will Willow Glens. And... Um, yeah, I just have to comment on this. Um, if you saw the karaoke uh, uh, portion of my Midwest Fur Fest video, I ran out of breath in the middle of the performance. It's it's much harder. Yeah, you, you wouldn't believe it, but it's much harder to sing in fursuit because you don't have as much air coming in. So, uh, let's see what else we got. The dance, uh, of course, will be at ten thirty at uh, room two ten. On Sunday, uh, I was just mentioning Sofa Wolf. Um, there will be a Sofa Wolf uh, Presents at uh, Willow Glen 3. That will be at 9 a.m. Uh, the Critter Olympics uh, will be at um, 11 a.m. at 2.10. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? Um... If you uh, want to get into DJing and get the basics of it, there will be a panel on that at Blossom Hill 1 at 1 p.m. Let's see, what else do we got? There is, um, of course, we'll have our uh, charity auction. There will be uh, uh, the adult um, art auction will be at 3 p.m. at room 211 and the general auction at 4 p.m. All right, and if, um, if you want to see this, uh, FC Unleashed will be at 7 p.m. at room 210. And we'll have another karaoke at 9.30 at all three Willow Glens. There will be a dance from 10.30 to go into 2.30 at room 2.10, and there's an open mic uh, at the same time uh, until midnight at room 2.11. And um, they're going to do the dead dog dance on Monday, and that will be from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. over in uh, the convention center. Uh, oh, actually... No, 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 I'm sorry, it's uh, Marriott, it'll be the, um, it, it says San Jose, and um, I'm not sure if they mean the hotel or there's a room called San Jose, because I didn't see it in the whole schedule. But um, that is the whole schedule, um, well, at least from me telling you, if you want to see the whole schedule, um, just go to uh, furtherconfusion.org. And I gotta give you the guests and the uh, charity. Uh, the uh, guests of honor. Uh, first of all, uh, we have British puppeteer uh, Andy Heath. Um, he uh, began his career as a swing performer uh, on uh, Dr. Doolittle. 
uh, the musical of if you want to see it, that's in 1998. And since then, he has uh, performed Kit on a Play With Me a Sesame UK. It's also a puppeteered guest spot on Jen Hampson's Mop Top Shop. And um, he has assisted on The Hoobs. He's performed a uh, Penguin on, with the Muppets on their UK spot on The X Factor. And uh, he's done um, some of his other film credits are Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, Tales of the Riverbank, Harry Hill the movie, and Frankenstein, uh, which is... Um, uh, Frankenstein, uh, the movie from last year. Um, another one of our guests will be um, Warwick Brownlow Pike. Um, he's uh, had a career in uh, TV uh, puppetry, uh, performing in some of Britain's um, best beloved and most watched uh, children's shows, uh, most recently on uh, Sesame Street's uh, The Furchester series. Um, he has, um, let's see, yeah, I'm only reading this now, <laughs> yeah, I, I always do my, um, my videos just, just going on as is, I, I usually don't, uh, do anything beforehand, so, um, he, uh, began to build, uh, puppets and practice teaching himself not only to be a puppeteer, also, uh, he's uh, done a writer, he's done a director, and a consultant for our various projects. And um, he has also worked with the, the Jim Hansen uh, Company in their last uh, project, uh, That Puppet Game Show, uh, which, uh, has a, uh, which is performing uh, with the Muppets in their um, most recent movie and working with the Sesame Workshop and, of course, um, of course uh, the Mongrels. And our final guest of honor is Lex Rudd. Um, he's uh, designed uh, puppets, costumes, and other uh, creature effects. Um, she has a unique blend of realism, fantasy, and stylization. Uh, let's see. Uh, she has um, appeared uh, on stage in film, television, and even in toy stores around the world. Uh, she has designed numerous award winning plush puppet characters for the renowned uh, toy company Folk Manis Puppets and her work uh, was recently featured on Sci-Fi Channel uh, to, when she was chosen to be one of the ten contestants on um, Jim Hansen's Creature Shop Challenge now, I, I, I've heard of the show but I haven't got to see it but, but it's awesome to, to actually appear on it uh, she currently owns her own shop, uh, Primal Visions, which is located in the North Bay area. And also on a, occasion works as a uh, contract puppet builder for a Jim Hansen uh, Creature Shop in Los Angeles. And our charity uh, for this year will be a Rocket Dog Rescue. Uh, who's, um, this is an all-volunteer nonprofit group dedicated to saving homeless and abandoned animals uh, from a uh, uh, euthanasia um, in overcrowded Bay Area shelters. Um, they they place non-aggressive dogs in temporary foster homes, uh, where they are uh, socialized, spayed, neutered, vaccinated, and uh, treated for any medical or behavioral conditions that would otherwise limit uh, their um, adoptability. And then they seek out uh, permanent quality homes. Uh, for those uh, deserving animals uh, through their volunteer work, online adoption page, uh, weekend adoption fairs, and neighborhood poster campaigns. So, all of these will be around the, uh, the con. Uh, be sure to uh, check them out. And um, I uh, didn't even mention uh, the registration. Uh, how did I miss that? Uh, of course, pre-registration is done, um, but if you want to register at the door, if my uh, connection would go any faster... There we go. Uh, the... Uh, at uh, the, the door, uh, it will be... Uh, 
sixty dollars. And for sponsors, it will be a hundred and twenty, and super sponsors will be two hundred and forty. But if you uh, wish to do a single day, uh, Thursday will be twenty-five dollars. Friday and Saturday separate will be thirty-five. Sunday will be thirty, and Monday will be twenty-five. All right, and I believe that is all for. Um, the information for further confusion. If you want all the information on it, just go to furtherconfusion.org. And that is uh, pretty much it for me. And um, yeah, uh, hopefully I uh, my ear will get better from now. But for now, this dragon's mouth is now closing.